Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the warnings keep coming and I just hope that you're taking heed to these warnings and getting prepared for this winter because the way that things are going, not only around the world, but with also the weather and natural forces, things keep getting worse. And this is not coming from me. This is coming from someone else, someone different who hasn't spoke up yet as far as I know. Here it says, it's very serious, they say. War and weather threaten to send food prices even higher. And this is dated 1 July. So it's even higher from what we have now. If you hear a buzzing in the background, please forgive me. I had to break down and get a small air conditioner for the bunker because it was getting way too hot in here. It got up to like 81 degrees and I have a lot of storable long-term food storage in here and I'm not going to keep it that warm in here so I have to break down and get one however I'll try to get that background noise out of the video once I edit this but let's go ahead and see what they have to say they say that US agriculture executives are warning that war and extreme weather have put global food supplies in danger we all know that as skyrocketing food prices have led to shortages and protests worldwide the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that the effects that are happening right now of what has happened in the past is going to exacerbate even more. It's going to get worse even more as time goes on because from now on, food prices are going to go even higher than what they are. Remember at the beginning of this year, I believe it was sometime in January, I said this year I am putting it on record and I am predicting that food prices for this year will rise 50 to 100%. Last year I said 50%. And that came true. This year, I'm saying that from the beginning of this year to the end of this year, we're going to see food prices on the shelf I'm talking about. I'm talking about the food that you buy, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to eat. Not the numbers that the government gives us. Because if we were using the, the numbers that the government gives us, everything is just fine. All right, But when they tell us that we're only spending an extra 9% on food, is that what you really think? Do you only spend an extra 9% on food? So you better get ready for prices to continue to go up and they will go up again after this year is over. They're going to continue to go up, ladies and gentlemen. We have a couple of different things, in my opinion, that is really going to make food prices continue to go up. Like they indicate here where they talk about the weather, right? Natural events, we really can't control those things except on how we do things, right? Also here, if this crisis continues overseas with war, that will also make food prices continue to go up. Why? Because even though we don't personally here in the United States import wheat, let's say, from Russia, other countries do. And if Russia is not being able to export wheat to those countries, what are we going to do here in the United States, ladies and gentlemen? Are we going to export all of the food to the entire rest of the world? We're already doing that with oil, exporting a lot of our oil and natural gas. And what has that done for our gas prices? Now imagine what that's going to do for our food prices when we start exporting all of our excess and not even having a carryover, which in my opinion is a national security issue. But I digress on that. In addition to all of those extra costs that are going to be put on food because of those forces, we still have inflation to deal with. All right? Inflation is not done, ladies and gentlemen. We've only felt a little bit of the inflationary forces that were put out on the market here in the last couple of years. So it still has a lot more to go. So you better be preparing now. He says, we actually have two crises. And then he goes on to say the war and extreme weather. He says that on top of that, world grain and fertilizer markets have been disrupted by the war in Ukraine. We all know about the fertilizer problem. I think we're going to continue to have that problem with fertilizer, especially if we continue here in the United States to export our natural gas and other countries that normally use natural gas to make fertilizer are not really doing so. Why? Because they want to save the earth, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it comes down to. Uh, they say that rising food prices are prompting unrest and we all know that when a nation's people has to spend 40% or more of what they bring home from their labor that they start to get very angry and they start to protest and it usually turns ugly. As disruptions in the flow of crops from Ukraine compound existing stress on global supplies of grains and other goods, the head of the United Nations World Food Program has warned outright that food shortages are possible in 2023 if Russia continues to block Ukraine's crop exports. Well, I'm not sure about Russia blocking Ukraine's crop exports. I don't know how that's going to work out, but check this out, ladies and gentlemen. 
This article came out today. Russia now demands rubles for grains as world's largest wheat exporter. So now if countries want to buy grain from Russia, they're going to have to play Russia's game. They're going to have to buy those grains using the ruble. Doing what, ladies and gentlemen? Forcing even more and more countries that won't have a choice but to use the rubles to buy grain from Russia. And what does that do? That weakens the dollar. Or that makes the dollar less valuable in the international market. Why? Because less dollars have to be held in other central banks. Getting all of those dollars, bringing them home, making our dollar even weaker and weaker, giving us less purchasing power. So this right here, you know, is something pretty serious that people may not be thinking about. When, when people hear this, oh, Russia is demanding rubles for, for uh, their grains. No big deal. It doesn't mean anything to them. But it will soon. It will mean something to you soon. When most of the world goes away from the dollar and starts interacting bilaterally with other nations not using the dollar. You have to understand that what gives the dollar most of its strength is that it is needed for trade. That's what gives it value. In addition to that, another thing that gives it value is that you and I are slaves to the system and we have to pay taxes in order to pay our, our uh, interest on our national debt. That's another thing that gives it value. But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very big deal. Am I saying that what Russia is doing is right or wrong? In my humble opinion, a country should be able to sell their resources in whatever currency they want. So if Russia went out and said, yeah, we're going to sell grains in gold, okay, it's theirs. If you build something in your garage and you want to sell it or trade it, shouldn't you be able to sell it for whatever you want to sell it for? Maybe you want to trade that chair that you built for, for a bicycle or for a moped. Do you have to trade it for dollars? It's the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. The problem is, is that the United States government understands that once it loses the world reserve currency, meaning that most of the countries in the world don't interact using the dollar when they purchase or sell things internationally, that the value of the dollar here at home and in the rest of the world will become excessively lower than what it is now, making our standard of living a lot lower than what it is now. I would say cut it in half or cut it in three quarters of what it is now. So this is the time that you need to start preparing if you're not. And if you are preparing, make sure that all of your gaps are staying full. And here they say that food prices will keep going up unless we can get product out through the Black Sea in south of Ukraine. So food prices will keep going up, ladies and gentlemen. So many people think not here in the U.S. Ukraine is not here. Russia is not here. We are a global community now. I don't think that, I think that in the end globalism will fail. Countries will realize that they have to produce the things that they need to survive at the minimum in their countries. Because countries are now finding out, just like the United States, wait a minute, what do we make in the United States? Are you telling me that if the water pump in my truck breaks down, I am at the behest of another country that's making it on whether they want to make it and send it here? And then you can go ahead and use that same ideology or that same example with anything, with pretty much anything that you use. Because almost nothing is made in the United States compared to what we export. Or excuse me, compared to what we import. I'll go ahead and leave the link to this article on a pinned comment so you can revisit it if you like. And I'll just go ahead and finish it with this. Uh, every generation, he says, gets tested. He said, adding that the aftermath of this health crisis, weather phenomenon that's happening around the world, and the war in Ukraine are significant challenges. But there is significant capacity for us to emerge stronger. Think of all of these problems right here that he's talking about. Right? He said that the aftermath of this health crisis, who caused most of the problems with his, this health crisis? It wasn't the health crisis that, that made so many people lose their jobs, that made the corporations stronger, that made the uh, mom and pop shops disappear. I think about one third to one half of mom and pop shops disappeared You know, in the time frame that they had people locked down for their own safety, of course. But now they can't feed their family unless they get help from an outside source. So it's government that's caused all of these problems. Weather phenomenon, I can't say anything about that. There are people that say that the government can change the weather. I can't say anything about that. I don't know anything about it. But this uh, thing that's going on in Ukraine, 
Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that. Anyways, there is capacity for us to get stronger, but the only capacity for us to get stronger, in my opinion, is that we realize as a people, not just as we the people only here in the United States, but around the world, as soon as we realize that we, we are not each other's enemies, and that when we work together, we are stronger, and that government is this small compared to us, we the people, once we realize that, we won't have nearly as many problems as we have now. Because government does a couple of things, ladies and gentlemen. It steals your wealth, number one, and it creates nothing but sorrow. Have a great day. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out. God bless.